Hey goalers, I'm here with Coach Ian again, and this time, Coach Ian is going to show you how to wash your bike properly. So Coach Ian, I see that you brought your nice Slayer here. It's a little dirty from the rides that we did. Yep. Um, but what is this thing, this totem-like structure? Actually, it's a do-it-yourself bike rack. So I've built it all my, by myself with my kids. I'm not somebody that's super, super manual and I was able to do it no problem. So this is just a regular decking and a four by four stuck in concrete with two by eights just holding the bikes. Really, really simple, really effective and it doesn't cost all that much. It looks really functional and pretty cool. Yes. All right, so I'll, I'll let you get to it in cleaning your bike. So go for it, man. Perfect. So first, first the tools of the trade. The first thing that you're going to use is a degreaser. So what I use is Spray 9. It's not bike specific, but it does the job. You can find it at any hardware store. This thing is pretty inexpensive. What I do recommend, however, is either bike soap. So you have Super Bike Wash from Finish Line. You have some great products from Mock Off. Go to the bike shop, there's a lot of options as well for you. In terms of degreaser, you have bike specific degreasers. They cost a little bit more, they smell good. It's you, up to you to decide. Then, what I did is I put this, uh, the content in those little squirt bottles. So those, are, those cost about $3 and they're really, really practical. And I'm gonna have as well my chain lube. What I really like to use is this magic hand. So you can use bike brushes, so I have a bunch of those. So you can have specific bike brushes and you can have special bike brushes such as these to hit all the nooks and cranny of your bike. So this is really, really practical, it comes in handy. Now, let's wash the bike. First things first, I, wanted, I want just to get it. Whoops, I'm gonna change settings here, shower. And the key here is just to rinse off the bike. And what you have to be mindful of is make sure that all the bearings here do not receive direct pressure. So for instance, if I use direct pressure here, it's not going to be good because I'm going to penetrate inside the bearings. And that's very, very detrimental. If ever your bearings get blown out, you can always change them. You can do it yourself, but it is a costly operation. So just be mindful of this when you are washing your bike. So I'm just giving it a good rinse like this all over the place. As you notice, I try not to be super direct about it. And then I'm going to use my bike wash and my degreaser. So first all, I'm going to spray some degreaser pretty much on all of the drivetrain. What I have to be mindful of, don't spray any degreaser into the disc. It's not good. So the degreaser like this is going to remove all the grease if there's a lot of buildup. So if you're not taking good care of your bike, the wash process is going to be super lengthy. If you're doing it on a regular basis, the bike wash should be a breeze. Five, 10 minutes max, it's going to be done. Next up, I'm going to use the bike wash and I'm going to put it deliberately on the bike all over the place. I like personally when there's a lot of soap. So I'm not going to neglect the tires. I'm going to make sure that the tires are nice and clean, gives it a fresh look. Magic hand, not very expensive, very, very practical. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash the whole bike and I'm going to do the very, very quick version. So I'm going to go through all of the bike like this and I'm going to make sure to wash the forks as well. <clears throat> and I'm going to clean the rims as well. So what I like is clean rims, clean sidewalls, looks good. Does it serve a purpose? Not really. However, if you are cleaning the surface here, this will give you some good grip. So if you are riding a very, very dirty tire, you're not gonna have as much grip. So make sure that the tire is nice and clean. So 
As I said previously, I'm botching it a little bit. I'm cleaning quickly for you guys. Cleaning the sidewall here, like so. Cleaning the top, cleaning the other sidewall. Now, if I wanna do an extra special job, I'm gonna take the time and remove both wheels. This is not something mandatory, but could be really practical. So basically, again, making sure that I'm not hitting all of the bearings inside. I can really take my time, make sure that you're not washing the discs as well, and I can really give them a good once over. I'm gonna do this with the front, and you can do it with the rear as well. Just make sure, ah, oh, that's another feature that you can wash inside. You can wash the inside and you wa can wash the brake caliper. There's no problem there. For the back wheel, what we're gonna do is we're going to remove the wheel completely so we have access to all the inside. Plus, we're gonna make sure that the brake pads are still in good shape. So that's an added advantage of removing the rear wheel. So, first things, you are going to put your bike on the smallest cog, so on the hardest cog at the end of your spectrum. You're gonna do this by shifting with the front. So I'm on the smallest cog, I am removing the axle. So removing, removing the axle, keeping it nice and dry, and I'm taking the derailleur by the end here and I'm gradually opening it up and removing the wheel. So the derailleur, you can go like this here. That's totally normal, that's totally okay. So all you have to do is remove it, move it out of the way, and you're able to remove the rear wheel. So I am now going to be able to really give a good clean, and I'm gonna be able to wash the cogs as well. Again, what you can do is taking a brush and making sure that you're getting all of the cogs nice and clean. So I'm botching it, of course, for TV because you don't want to watch the whole five minutes, but you get the general idea. So when I'm cleaning like that, my cogs are really nice and clean. There's no added residue on them. I can give it a good, good rinse and I can rinse and wash the inside of the swing arm. So this is pretty important as well. It's not a part that gives, gets a lot of love. So make sure that you're able to wash all of the inside and it's going to allow you to go through all the little nooks and cranny when your bike is not, when your wheel is not attached to the bike. I'm gonna give a little care, a little extra care to my derailleur that has been true enough and seen some abuse. So I just wanna make sure that everything is perfect. Going through a nice rinse. And again, you're not going directly in. You are going to sprinkle the bike and making sure that you're not spraying directly inside the bearings. So this is going to be the key. While I'm at it, what I can do is I have my Allen keys. So I can do a little bolt check, just make sure that everything is in running order. The first thing I'm gonna analyze is the brake pads. So the brake pads can be something that gets worn pretty quickly, and I wanna make sure that I'm always safe. Running out of brake pads during a long descent or a long bike ride can be detrimental. So you're always gonna to have to check it out. So I'm going to look at the wear of the brake pad. In this case, my brake pads are almost brand new. You can see that there's still a lot of material. So you can watch the back and the front, just making sure that you have enough material to get you to the next ride. Next thing that we're gonna do is doing a small bolt check. So by doing a bolt check, all you're gonna do is go through all the bolts and make sure that they're tight enough. 
What I want to warn you about is over tightening a bolt. So you're just going to make sure that there's no play and that they are up to spec. So there's a couple of bolts here, a couple of bolts here. I'm going to make sure that the derailleur is nicely firmly in place. I'm going to make sure that the brakes are still good to go. So the best advice I can give you is taking a star like this. You have four, five, and six, and it's easy for you to go through all the bike and just make sure that everybody, everything is tightened up. I'm going to make sure that the pinch bolts here are tight as well. And that's going to allow me to have full confidence on the bike. Last thing is going to be placing the rear wheel. So the best thing that I can recommend is taking the bike off of the stand and let's see if this works smoothly. I'm putting the cogs in the middle of the chain. I'm choosing the, the gear. So remember I was on the easiest gear. I'm going to make sure that the cog here is aligned with the chain on the easiest gear. Aligning everything, I'm taking my derailleur and I'm working it so that the wheel, of course it's TV so it's going to be harder. Hold on a second, I'll do it again. I'm going to make sure, maybe going in the middle of my cassette, I'm going to make sure that I'm able to, there you go, of putting the cogs back together. Last thing I want to check is making sure that the disc goes into place. There you go. So the disc goes into place. Everything is good. Everybody, everything is lined up. And I'm going to take my axle and I'm going to slide it back in. Sometimes wiggling the wheel, struggling with it a little bit, taking my six mil, and then I can re-tighten everything and make sure that everything is nice and secure. Then I can just give my wheel a quick spin. There we go. Last thing, what I want to do is just go through a normal routine of checking if everything works. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check if there's any rub between the rotor and the pads. So spinning the wheel and I can actually look at the rotor and the pads. I want to have just a little bit of distance. I don't want to have any brake rub. First, reduces performance and second, it can be annoying. So make sure that your bike doesn't make any sounds. So in this case, I'm good to go. Next, I'm going to be able to run through all the gears. I'm going to go to the smallest cog. So I have the smallest cog here and I'm just going to make sure that I'm able to go one up, one down and that it's crisp. So I'm going, I'm pedaling, one up, one down, one up, one down. Now I can see that it's good to go that it's pretty much the same speed going up as going down. If ever there's a difference of speed or you're not able to go up or to go down with the chain, what you have to do is loosen or tighten the cable. So you're going to do it with the little adjuster that's right here. Last thing, make sure that you can go to all of the range of the gears. You can go to the smallest one and one click down every step of the way. One click down, nice, and one click up. And I'm good to go. So I know that I have full confidence in my braking and I have full confidence with my gear selection. So it gives you an added bonus washing the bike and just making sure that everything is in running order. The last thing you can do is check for wear and tear on your bike and also check for frame damage. So if ever you hit a rock and you have a frame damage or if a carbon part 
gets delaminated or you see a, a mark, please consult your bike, uh, your bike shop because you don't want to have what we call a catastrophic failure. So if through wear and tear, there's a little mark developing and then you hit something big and the frame explodes, it's going to put you at risk. So just make sure that you feel 100% confident about your bike and you're going to feel more confident on the trail take tackling harder trails. Now I can invite Charles back. So Charles, I don't have my soaker. It's safe. safe? Okay. It's a safe setting. A it's, we're building our trust issues, right? <laughs> okay, we're trusting each other. Nice job, Ian. The bike looks really nice. Nice and clean. It's still a little wet, but mm -hmm. I really like the fact that you talked about taking the time to check your bike, not just make it clean and pretty, but to make it safe. Exactly. A clean bike is a happy bike, so you want to make sure that if you're talking about performance, whether you're a beginner or advanced, you want to have the maximum performance of your equipment. So just to wash it regularly and make sure that it's not all caked up with old grease and it really, really goes a long way. Plus, you're saving your drivetrain. You're saving a lot of bucks. So a drivetrain that's really, really mucky and always going through the same bad oil is going to wear out faster. So you just want to make sure that it's always clean. However, if you're cleaning it too much and if you're spraying directly inside all the nuts and bolts, you will have damage. So it's a happy medium between washing well your bike, not washing it too much and not taking care of it at all. Okay. I see you're holding some shop towels. Uh, how do you dry your bike? So it's pretty, pretty simple actually. And you're gonna help. Oh. So, <laughs> so I'm taking the shop rags. This is readily available. Again, you can have the fancy schmancy stuff or you can get what you'd find in a hardware store. So basically I'm gonna rinse off. You, you can do it too, okay. you, you, you can help. So I'm gonna rinse off all of the parts, all of the basic parts. So I just wanna make sure that I'm re removing uh, removing a lot of the water from it. Uh, you can go the extra way and go get showroom polish. So there's polish that, that exists that you can put on your bike, plus added features, something we, we were using at, the World, uh, at a World Cup level. We were actually putting bike wash or, um, or bike polish on the, on the bikes and it wasn't caked up with mud as much. So that was a trick so the bike doesn't weigh like 50 pounds because it's caked with mud. It was shedding a little bit of the mud, so that was helping as well. That's a really cool trick. Thanks for sharing that. How do I do? Is that pretty dry? That yeah, that's pretty dry. So right. we're going to look at the drivetrain. So what we can do as well is only if you have a very, very clean cloth, you can work on the disc. So make sure that it's nice and dry. Otherwise, what happens, Charles, when the disc is dirty, what sound does it make? I bet it plays a lovely song. It goes, okay, so the sound of the whale. So you don't want that. When that happens, it means that it's either contaminated with oil or that it's really, really dirty. Quick tip you can do, or you can ask your bike shop to do, basically what they're gonna do is gonna take a very, very fine sandpaper and they can do the pads and they can do the disc, but watch it. Just make sure that you're doing it the right way. Uh, you can check YouTube videos on that one. Basically, it's a little rub in the direction of rotation. So that's a little pointer for you. We can talk about that in our next video on maintenance. Exactly. Right. Basic maintenance. Before I fall down the deck, okay. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash the chain. So I can take again my rag, I can put it up here, and I can slowly pedal. So it's awkward because I'm used to doing it the, the other way. And I just want to show it for TV. So I'm just going to give it a good turnaround because I use the, gray, the greaser. So the greaser removes most of it, but still you see that there's a lot of red, residue. So if you do it enough, you actually get to clean your whole chain and a clean bike is a happy bike. A clean chain is a happy chain. Do you want to reuse my rag that's just wet with water? Of course, that's absolutely no problem. When you take care of the, of the chain, actually when you look at the bike, it's the most, complete, uh, most complicated component. 
Look at all the pivots there are. So it's, you, you can't even number them. So a chain is actually pretty complex. And if you don't take t uh, care of your chain, it might snap. And if you have a chain that snaps, it can go through all your drivetrain and rip everything apart. Or you can get a knee to the stem because you're giving a good push and the chain snaps. Both of them are hurt a lot. So just pay attention to that. Speaking of chains, how do you lubricate your chain? What I personally use is dry lube. So you want something that doesn't stick and that's not too greasy. Seems, seems like an oxymoron, dry lube. Yeah, dry lube, but some, some lube is really, really thick. It looks like motor oil almost. Okay. That cakes your cold drivetrain. If you're riding in really, really wet situations and you don't want to, the, the, the oil to evaporate, you could use it, but for me, honestly, always dry lube and I just put some, you know, a thin slice or I put just a little bit more, but I usually go for dry lube. It's good enough for a two, three hour ride. It's perfect. How long do you uh, wait after you've lubed your chain to go for a ride? Uh, basically what you can do is just lube your chain. After that, give it a good rinse again with your towels and you're pretty much ready to go. That's pretty sweet. So I can show you how. Are you interested? Yeah. Okay, cool. What I like to think about is lubing all the inside of the chain. So think about it. If you're lubing outside, as most people are doing, well, you're actually lubing everything that doesn't contact the, um, the cogs. Simple, right? So I want to be lubing the inside and that's going to be pretty dicey. So you want to make sure that you're hitting it correctly and you want to make sure that you're using just enough. There you go. And then I can just run through all the gears. I'm letting it penetrate a little bit so you can let it penetrate maybe a minute or so. And then you take your rag again and you remove the excess. So by removing the excess, you're keeping your chain clean and you're just wiping off whatever's not, whatever didn't actually go into the rivets of the chain because it's not really the chain has to be lube. It's actually the rivets inside that has to be lube. All right, thanks for those valuable tips. The bike looks good. Is it ready to go? Totally ready to go. So the last thing I would do is I would check for tire pressure. I would check for suspension, but that's gonna be the next video. Cool, thanks. All right, there you go. So we just went over everything you need to know in terms of cleaning a bike. If you like this video, let us know by clicking on the like button. If you want to see more videos with Coach Ian in them, subscribe to our channel. And we have a special surprise for you. The workstation that Ian put together here to clean his bike is available. And we have the plans of that for you in the link below. So if you click on that link, We'll send you those uh, plans and you'll be able to build one just like this and say, I have Coach Ian's station. So until that time, we'll see you on Gold TV.